The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Sonic Web Studios specializes in custom web design, app development, social networking, search engine optimization, domain registration, email marketing, online stores, and more. Since our birth, we have been designing and developing immaculate websites and providing web solutions which are a cut above the rest. As a leading web designing enterprise, we have a team of extremely talented web designers designers who are well focused and have the experience of working on multiple web developing platforms such as PHP, Magento, Custom WordPress and more. Sonic Web Studios has been helping businesses of all kinds whether big, small, established or startup impress their audiences with exemplary web solutions. We don't just create beautiful and functional websites, we give you a complete online solution with the main goal of enhancing your yearly revenues. We aim to give your business the online exposure and brand acknowledgement that will help you in achieving increased conversions leading to profitable sales. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and the MikeWagnerShow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Power by Sonic Web Studios. Visit our line at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be here on the Mike Wagner Show.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, Apple, and over 25 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with a wonderful gentleman from Alberta, Canada. He's the... um. Producer and the man behind how thoughts become things. It's something to really, really think about. He's um, a producer of many developmental movies like The Opus, The Grad to Experiment, The Treasure Map, and a lot more. And, of course, with what's going on today in this world, we tend to have some thoughts which become things. And he's going to teach you why thoughts become things and how to turn around and what what is your conscience and just... You'll, you'll get all your questions answered, and it's all in a nutshell. He also has a movie out as well, too, and gathers some really good people. So live, ladies and gentlemen, from beautiful Alberta, where it's up north and no hockey pucks are flying at this time, ladies and gentlemen, the development master, Douglas Vermeeren. Douglas, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, Mike. Thanks for having me on. Well, it's great to have you on as well, too. So you're a producer of development movies like The Opus, The Grad to Experiment, The Treasure Map, and you have a new movie out called How Thoughts Become Things. And it's about um, mm-hmm. revealing new look at truth, strategy, patterns, and misconceptions, which takes a step beyond and above as well, how our thoughts influence and affect our lives. And, of course, you know, just something to think about during these times as well, too. And before we get into all that, um, tell us how you got first started. Well, you know, I, I started kind of in a unique way. I really actually didn't have any experience with personal development at all as a young man. My family didn't really get into that too much. Um, but when I was about 19, I had someone give me the book Think and Grow Rich. And I don't know if your listeners have heard of it, but to write it, Napoleon Hill went out and he interviewed some of the world's top achievers in his time in the 1930s, people like Thomas Edison and Henry Ford and the Rockefellers and so forth. And so when I read this book, I actually became inspired to do the same. So I went out and I started 
interviewing and meeting top business leaders, entrepreneurs, celebrities, athletes, and people who've achieved achieved amazing things throughout their career. And um, I really recognized that it was their thinking that got them the results. It was their thinking that made the changes. And so that was really kind of the genesis of the movie. But I really actually practiced it in person before I, I started to create the film. And that's how it all started. That is amazing. And what was that moment that precisely influenced you into doing what you're doing? So what was that aha moment that says, yes, I'm going to do how thoughts become things? Well, I, I guess for me, it was uh, one of these things like as I interviewed those top achievers uh, and began to be mentored by many of them, my results changed. I began to experience uh, big financial success and business success and everything else. And then suddenly people started asking me to come out and speak at their groups and share with them how I had done these things and, you know, some of the advice I'd gotten from some of these world's top achievers. And the more that I was out there speaking and sharing, the more I realized that many people may say on the surface that they understand that their thoughts do bring about, you know, better things in their life, but most people don't know how it's done. And they also, uh, I, I'd say one of the biggest mistakes is most people hold back and they think too small. And so really I thought that there was a big need to show people that our thoughts uh, good or bad are correlated to the realities we experience and to make a shift, to really start attracting the things that we want, that we desire, that we need in our lives, really actually begins with our thoughts, but not in the way really that most people think. And so with the film, I try to unfold what I had learned firsthand with those top achievers, and, and I believe anyone can do it. Mm -hmm. and, and and what's the cause, do you think, that of – of, of people thinking too small or to save or say, you know, I can't do this. It's like, what is like the real genesis of it? And how, how do you manage to overcome? Well, I, I think there's a couple of things and it always comes from our programming uh, and not just the programming that we were raised with, but sometimes even the programming of the families that we are born into or the communities that we're born into. There's certain like rules that are kind of unwritten that limit us sometimes. And the other thing about programming is, Often people forget that it's even occurring right now. In fact, even as people are listening to your show, they're being programmed. This is something that you're allowing to influence you and to help you to decide either you believe it or you don't, or the, you know, you're going to rise or you won't. And so it's really important that we recognize that we have control over our circumstances, regardless of what our programming is. And so when we become aware of that programming, we can start to identify things like fear, uh, feelings of unworthiness. In other words, am I good enough to do this? Am I capable of doing this? And also, I think we begin to identify patterns of, you know, self-defeating behavior that's in our lives that keeps us from doing things. And as soon as we start to really recognize how our thoughts are limiting us, we can unlock the possibilities to allow them to empower us. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk more about fear in just a minute as well, too. But first, listen to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at professional website with our brick and budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention The Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, The Mike Widener Show can be heard on com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash The Mike Widener Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, and over 25 podcast platforms. Take The Mike Widener Show at the end. Any mobile device, subscribe to The Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Also, follow The Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with Douglas Vermeer in the producer of How Thoughts Become Things here on the Mike Widener Show. It's a movie that's um, coming out as well, too. Before we talk about the movie, you talk about fear and how is that created and overcome? Well, fear, there's, there's many different kinds of fears that we experience, but they can all really be attached to one thing, and that's really an, an unknown, an element of unknown. Generally, when we know something about fear, when we know about the things that frighten us, uh, we we're we're like we we have power over them, right? Like <laughs> what we know, we have power over. I guess it's kind of 
You know, uh, one example that's really kind of neat is within the film, there's a lady that talks about she used to have a fear of spiders, right? Mm -hmm. And um, that fear really paralyzed her and kept her, in fact, even from doing some of the work-related things that she needed to do as she worked for one of the Utah National Parks. Mm -hmm. And as she began to learn about fears, suddenly she, she realized that they were, in fact, quite beautiful creatures. And while there are some that are dangerous, this idea of fear allowed her to identify which ones were not and which ones were. And it, it's interesting that, you know, as the film has now come out, we've received a lot of emails and letters from people who've enjoyed the film, and it's really helped them a lot. But there was one specific letter that came that, to me, really made a difference when it came to this topic of fear. And it was from a, an 11-year-old boy. And this boy had told me that there were many things that he was afraid of in his life. He was afraid of bullies at school. He had fear about, you know, his future and some of the things that were going on at school. And, and then he ended with, you know, right now everyone's talking to adults about the COVID virus, but most people haven't really talked to us as kids, right? Mm -hmm. And helping us to understand what to do. And he was afraid. And then he expressed that as he began to understand, again, from an awareness point of view, and how this fear really was constructed and how it was, you know, uh, limiting him and paralyzing him and, and creating almost a perception of things. And in fact, sometimes things that didn't even exist, that it gave him power to make new uh, choices and, and to see things from a new perspective. And because of that, he was able to overcome the fear. So I think... You know, it, it's, fear is, is different for everyone, but the important thing to realize is that it's real. Even if we don't think it makes sense, to that person it does. And we need to understand that fear actually is a real force. It's a real power. And, um, you know, any thought that's charged with emotion gains more power. And we only act on the feelings and the thoughts that have emotional power. So whether it's fear or excitement or what have you, you know, we really need to understand that um, the, the emotion behind it is the genesis of what it will really become in reality. Mm -hmm. and, and you also talked about as well, too, with fear being attached to the uh, to the current COVID virus and also the pandemic situation. And how can people overcome the fear of getting the COVID and also the current pandemic? Mm hmm. Well, there, there's a lot of fear behind that. And, you know, it's funny that I was just chatting with a reporter on CNN the other day about this. And we were uh, talking a little bit about what we felt were the most dramatic effects of COVID. And now, obviously, my heart goes out to the people who are suffering it from a health perspective and people that have even lost loved ones because of it. Right. Like this is a big deal. But we found that really what's happening even worse than the health issues is the mental issues. And people, in fact, uh, you know, we've already seen suicides. We've seen people who've, you know, become discouraged as they've been isolated. And we've seen people who've lost their incomes because they've been paralyzed and they don't really know what else to do. And, you know, the, the, the thought component of this has actually been, I think, more devastating than any other aspect of, of what we've experienced so far. Mm -hmm. And do you think uh, OCD and also PTSD also plays uh, in part with fear? I, I think it certainly does. Now, it may not affect everyone in the same way, but I certainly think that it does. And, um, you know, we've got to be really sensitive to that and also individuals who experience that. And I think we need to be empathetic and we need to understand that these are real things. It's not just a, an imagined um, kind of feeling about things, but, you know, the thoughts that people have, like, it, it's interesting because in the film we get into also – uh, what we call the psychosomatic effects of thought. In other words, how your thoughts affect your physical body. Hmm. And, you know, we've all heard of scientific experiments that have been done with the placebo, where they've given people sugar pills and told them that they're getting well, and it's worked. And the truth of the matter is, is that these are real things, and people do heal themselves mentally because they believe in certain things. And the opposite is also true. People have, uh, you know, in fact, one of the analogies that we, we did talk about a little bit was things like voodoo and, and belief and faith healing and how different people either believe in a, in a blessing or a curse, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, one of the things that was interesting, too, I love what, what one of the speakers said is, is she talked about even when we have thoughts about other people, they can receive that on an energetic level and they feel it. In fact, the funny analogy she used was, can you imagine a wedding where half the people think these guys just aren't going to make it? <laughs> and oh, everyone, oh yeah, I heard you know, those cold feet, feelings, <laughs> right? And, yeah, and, and, and the couple, the couple being married, they can sense this, they can feel this, and so 
You know, the thoughts that are there affect everything from energy levels to our health, to our performance, to our ability to do things. And like we know when someone believes in us, truly believes in us, but we also know when someone doesn't, mm-hmm. right? It- and so we've got to be really careful about the power of thought. It's, it's far more powerful than most people realize. So that explains why some couples get cold feet. All those thoughts start getting <laughs> in the way. So I, I guess cold feet kind of takes on a different meaning here. <laughs> Well, it, it, it might. And, and again, I think there's probably lots of different reasons why couples take cold feet. But the one thing that I think is true is that, um, you know, thoughts have uh, an energy, a vibrational energy, not just like the, the electronical impulse that can be measured by scientific instruments. But I think it has an energy that we don't know how to measure, but we certainly can feel. And like I said, when someone believes in us, we can sense that. It just intuitionally, we know. But when they don't, Right. We also sense that. And um, we can also sense when someone's kind of faking it. Right. Like a phony baloney. Right. You can feel that, too. Mm -hmm. And he also explained as well, too, about trying to be someone you're not. And that's all part of the um, the the fear as well, too. And, of course, uh, social media also affecting people as well, too, in their thinking. Maybe you can just expand a little bit about the social media. It's like, you know, is a person real or is it considered fake or are they trying to be somebody that they're not? Well, I think social media uh, really exposes insecurities in a high level. And that's why many times people are posting a false reality or trying to portray themselves as something that they're really not. I think people that are truly content generally don't have to tell the world about it. <laughs> they get <laughs> and they're satisfied with it, right? Yeah. And, and, and kind of on that idea, it's funny, as I mentioned at the beginning of the interview, I've had the chance to, to spend time and interview more than 400 of the world's top achievers. Many of them have become friends, close friends. And so I've been to many events where um, at my table have been my friends, and several of them have been multi-billionaires. Wow. Uh, some of them at the table have been, you know, award-winning celebrities and everything else. And, you know, what's interesting is whenever I'm with that kind of a group and someone in that, you know, network or what have you or at that event is faking it, in other words, just fake it till you make it, I can always see my friends who've really made it kind of cringe. And they don't want to bring someone like that in their circle. So a lot of times when people say, I'll fake it till I make it, um, what you're really doing is you're putting those that are truly successful kind of against you. They don't want to help you. They don't want to attach to you. Their their brand and their reputation are obviously, you know, in uh, jeopardy. If, if they get involved with somebody that's obviously faking it and not doing a great job of it. And so my advice is, is rather than fake it till you make it, it's much more productive to be humble and admit that you're teachable and that you want to learn things and you can share your goals and your direction, but don't be putting yourself out there as someone who's already done it Mm -hmm. because it just offends those at the higher level who've already done the work and have done it. A billionaire will not stoop down and help a faker. That's Mm -hmm. the bottom line, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right, exactly. And what are some of the secrets to the um, the most successful people like the multimillionaires and one of the multibillionaires? What are some of the few secrets and some of the more common traits? Well, there's there's a lot of secrets we can get into, and I've written uh, a handful of books on that. Um, My book, Personal Power Mastery, shares a lot of it, and I'm working on a new book right now called The Wealth Mindset. Um, I think one of the biggest things that the successful people that I've met have right off the bat is just a clear sense of clarity and purpose. They know exactly where they're heading and where they're going. And it's been said uh, in, in our programs that a goal that is specific and clear becomes attainable and near. And so they know exactly what they want. But there is a strategic formula for getting there. And I think that one of the biggest things that all top achievers have in common, uh, and this might be an interesting insight, whenever they begin a task, say they're starting a business or they want to create something, most common people, like the average person, starts with questions that I consider selfish. Questions like, what can I do? Mm -hmm. How can I do this? How can I start? Where do I begin? And notice they all have a common thing, and it's I. Right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And generally, you can tell you're on the wrong track by, you know, often they off those questions start by what and how as well. But one of my mentors taught me something really interesting. He said, if you want to build something bigger than you, the first question to ask isn't how or what. It's actually who. Mm -hmm. And what he means by that is rather than saying, how can I? The question should be, who can help me? Mm -hmm. Who can help me solve this? Who has the answers? Who's already done this? Who knows the systems? Who knows, right? And it's always who, because if you think about it, all success and wealth that's ever existed has actually been built by a team, not an individual. For example, no one's ever climbed Mount Everest by themselves, 
like alone. No one has ever gone to the moon by themselves or alone. No one has ever won a gold medal by themselves. And the list goes on. No one's ever built a fortune by themselves. You, you need people. You need a team. All success is created by a team. And so what I noticed with the most you know, uh, successful people that I've ever interviewed and also with my own life as I built my fortune and everything else that I've had a chance to connect with, including the movies, is that the question that you need to ask is who can help with this? Mm -hmm. And you look always for the best support systems that are out there. In fact, I love what Steve Jobs said once. He said, we don't hire the smartest people and tell them what to do. We hire the smartest people so they can tell us what to do. And that's one of the quickest ways to get success is surround yourself with people far smarter than you and then listen very carefully. Become a student before you feel like you need to be a teacher and you'll find that you'll be very successful. Wow, that is amazing. I'm learning a lot from you. This is great. <laughs> and what's the number one misconception people have about thoughts? We'll uh, get to that in just a second along with the movie. But first, listen to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash themikewagnershow. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, Apple, and over 25 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here at Douglas Vermeeren, the uh, producer of How Thoughts Become Things. That's on um, film here on the Mike Wagner Show. And he's also produced the Opus, the Grad to Experiment, the Treasure Map, and more. And before we get to the movie, what is the no one misconception people have about thoughts? But I think probably one of the biggest mistakes that people are making is they think too small. Right? Mm -hmm. They hold back and they don't really imagine or believe that they could create something big, right? And so therefore they think small and they play by the set of rules that are imposed around them. And I think a lot of it is, again, because of the programming that they've received from a younger age. And so I'm going to suggest one of the first things that you should do is question your programming. You should look at some of the beliefs that you have. Look at them in detail and question them and ask, is this really me? And when you have these flickerings of inspiration that you can be more, to trust that. If you think about it, ever since the Big Bang, the universe has been expanding and it's been building out. And if you look at everything in life, like a tree even growing or what have you, they're always in an expansive, a mode of expansion or growth. But the problem with most people is they think too small of themselves. They look for reasons why they can't. And they think that that's playing safe. But the truth is, is every time that we contract or we constrict, or we shrink, we're actually operating against or contrary to the entire universe, right? Everything around us, everything in nature expands and grows. We're the only ones that really decide intentionally to hold back and not play at our best, not to give our best. And whenever we do that, we feel less than our best, and it doesn't really bring out a feeling of brilliance. In fact, Socrates once said that we are teleological beings. And what he meant by that is that we find happiness when we are making progress and so for us to play small and to hold back literally dooms us to be a lesser version of ourselves and i think that that's the biggest danger of this all is we don't trust our brilliance right in our hearts we know that we're destined for more listen to that voice mm -hmm. and as we do we can become more Mm -hmm. And what exactly is true empowered thinking? Of course, you know, you want to get people out of their little circle, their comfort zone, their cage and everything. And of course, you know, everybody thinks big or a good portion of people. What is the true empowered um, you know, way of thinking? Well, I, I think it's it, it's interesting because there's really two questions that are there. And one of them, I think uh, a lot of the gurus have it wrong. After interviewing more than 400 of the world's top achievers, I am definitely at odds with the people that say you need to step out of your comfort zone. The truth is, is there's a lot of things in life that you're not comfortable with, and you could spend forever trying to learn them all and become good at them. What you need to focus on is not outside your comfort zone, but within your brilliance zone, the things that you're really, really good at. And you've got to learn how to delegate. If you look at all the top achievers, they don't try to do everything. They're not trying to be the jack of all trades, master of none. They become very good at one thing or a few very small things, 
and then they delegate everything else. So you need to learn not to step out of your comfort zone. Instead, you need to learn how to become a master delegator. Now, let's go to this other idea that you're kind of talking about, about you know, proactive thinking. Mm. Now, there's really four kinds of thinking. And, you know, uh, get over to the film so you can learn a little bit more about all four. But let's focus on proactive right now. Proactive means that we make decisions before the moment of decision arrives. So in other words, we intentionally decide ahead of time who we are, what we want, what we will tolerate, what we will not tolerate, and we build boundary, action plans, and habits all in advance of them being forced upon us. Most people live their life from a reactionary point of view or an autopilot. Whatever comes, they respond to. And to some extent, yes, we do all have to respond if things appear, but for the most part, we have control so we can determine in advance what we want our life to look like. And so when certain situations and opportunities appear, we can say yes. And as we recognize what those are, our power grows. We begin to gain more influence over our own situations and our own life. The problem, like I said again, is that most people wait for the moment to arrive rather than creating the moment. It's kind of like that quote that you've, you, you've heard and seen on you know, motivational posters. We don't wait for the ship to come in and get us. We swim out to it. Mm-hmm. And that's the difference between a proactive person and a non-proactive person. Mm-hmm. And that's very true, too. And before we get to your movie, How Thoughts Become Things, and uh, you also develop other movies like The Opus, The Gratitude Experiment, The Treasure Map. And uh, tell us about some of those movies. Yeah, well, The Opus was our first film. We did that one in 2008. And it really focuses on the idea of how to go from a vision of what you want out of life to literally turn it into a workable plan, and then ultimately what we call performance in your life, so that it flows automatically. In that film, I had some of the biggest names in personal development, like everyone from Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen and Joe Vitale and John Martini and the rest of the gang, helping to unfold the principles behind that. The second movie that I did was called The Gratitude Experiment. In fact, as I interviewed the world's top achievers, I noticed that there was quite a bit of uh, discussion missing. When you read a success book, there were elements that no one talked about. One of them was gratitude. And the principle of gratitude, in fact, when it's practiced properly, which most people are not aware how to do that, but when you practice it properly, it actually brings abundance and opportunity into your life, probably like nothing else in the world can. The third movie that I did was called The Treasure Map. And that one actually focused a lot on money. Money is a discussion we all either love to have or hate to have. It's very divisive. It's very emotional. Um, but as I interviewed the 400 of the world's top achievers, I was able to learn how to make an extremely large amount of money uh, from a background where I was broke. My family was broke. My parents were broke. My grandparents, everyone was broke. And so it really gave me a massive shift. So this film talks about how to really tap into the money source, how to tap into the mindset that creates money, how to really tap into the way income streams actually unfold for the wealth. And believe it or not, which is what's kind of cool is based on the teachings in that, I began to conduct seminars teaching people how to build passive or leveraged income streams. And Money Magazine just recently rated me as the number one passive income coach in the world because we've got the highest success rate. Now, that's not really because of my fault. It's because, again, these are the lessons directly from 400 of the world's top achievers. It's not guesswork. I didn't read someone else's book. I didn't trial and error. I actually learned directly from the source and the fountain. So that's it, right? But, um, yeah, so those are our three movies. Now we've got How Thoughts Become Things, which we're really excited about. Um, it's, it's very quickly you know, becoming one of the most popular films that we've made, and uh, we're very excited about what it's doing for people. I like to hear more about how thoughts have become things and um, what's that about, how you got started, and where can we see it? You got me really excited about this, along with everybody else. Well, thank you. And, you know, we've had such a fun time making it. The the best place to see it, because obviously right now we're uh, not able to go out to movie theaters and that kind of thing. So we've done an online release. A person can go directly to howthoughtsbecomethings.com. Again, that's www.howthoughtsbecomethings.com. And um, for those that come and join us for the movie right now, we've actually got some really cool bonuses that we're also sharing uh, in the form of a workbook that will help you apply the information, some additional audios that will help you learn it that you can put directly into your phone, and uh, you know a variety of other tools like some daily quote books and all kinds of other things that will help you really bring the film into your practical life so you can actually use it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, head over to howthoughtsbecomethings.com. And don't forget the popcorn. 
And don't forget the popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It, you talked about the uh, 400 uh, biggest influence influencers you uh, mentioned throughout the interview. There was one that came to mind in one of my favorite books. I just want your thoughts. Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. Maybe give us your thoughts on the book. Oh, I think this, it's a brilliant book. In fact, you know what's hilarious? I have now got it in my hands. <laughs> really? In <laughs> your hands? Right in, here. in your hands right now as we speak. <laughs> as I speak. But there's the page is turning. In fact, this is actually, funny enough, um, my very first personal development book that I ever read. Um, I know in a lot of my bio and online it says that, you know, I, I started interviewing the top achievers after reading Think and Grow Rich. But the truth is, is, I got those two books in tandem as a gift from the same individual. I got How to Win Friends, Influence People, and Think and Grow Rich together. And um, this was the first one that I read. Wow. And I found it to be a very, very powerful book. And in fact, I, I think a lot of the strategies in it are what allowed me to have the confidence to chat with some of those top 400 achievers. And I think in many circumstances, many of the tools that are in there also got me past the gatekeepers. So uh, I can't recommend that book enough. I think it's probably one of the greatest personal development books ever written. And what's your favorite chapter in the book? Wow, now you've got me stumped. Um, <laughs> I think it depends. Yeah, I, I, I think it depends on sort of what's going on in my life at the time. Um, and if I were to show you this copy that I have, you'd see that it's literally marked and annotated and highlighted and um, there's so much that I've written in the columns. I don't know that I can pick a favorite book um, or a f favorite chapter in the book. I just think there's so many things that are in here that are valuable. Uh, you know, one of, one of the chapters that just looking through that I've obviously got a lot highlighted here is in the area of a simple way to make a good first impression. Mm -hmm. I've got so much that's highlighted in there. And, um, you know, one of the things that, that I love, and I'll just read with you one of the first things that's here that I think is really fun, it says, uh, on page 69 in my copy, it says, you must have a good time meeting people if you expect them to have a good time meeting you. Mm. And I think that that's, that's really important. And when we're out there in the world and we're connecting with people and we're networking, um, you know, we've got to understand that there's a, there's a power that, that really comes with being authentically excited to meet people. And, you know, maybe you've been to an event where you felt like someone has actually come up to you to meet you because they had an agenda. They wanted to sell you something. They wanted you to come and see their booth or they wanted you to take their business card. Well, we can sense that. So when we appear as though we're actually happy and we don't really care what we get out of it, we just want to meet this person and we're excited to do it. And, you know, it's a real feeling of genuineness. People can sense that. And I think that that's really important. And, you know, I, I think in this world where, you know, people are, how should we say, so online with social media, right? And we're so connected to social. I think a lot of times that we've lost that, right? Mm -hmm. We accept friends' requests without really thinking about it. We, you know, uh, add somebody on LinkedIn without really kind of investigating even who they are. Maybe we don't even read the title or care. Um, you know, so we just carelessly form a lot of relationships now. And so I think that this day and age, a relationship that is now built out of quality and someone that's genuinely interested and concerned has a lot more power than it's ever had before because so many of the other tools have sort of robbed that from us and taken it away. Uh huh. That is amazing what you said as well, too. And one of the things that stood out in the Dale Carnegie book is addressing them by their name and also relating to um to, to what they do and their lifestyle and what do you do? You know, just a simple list. I'm going to share one of um, the stories my dad did is that we, we go to Chicago Stadium to watch um, the Chicago Bulls or Blackhawks game. And then he'll look at the someone's tag, you know, hey, how you doing, Clarence? Or hey, how you doing, Derek? And everything. And that's how you start a really good conversation. Addressing by their first name actually makes them feel important. And I like the, the points that you're making as well, too, Doug. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, definitely. Yes, that's right. And, of course, uh, we have um, Douglas Vermeen, How Thoughts Become Things, here on the Mike Wagner Show. Just a few minutes here with uh, Douglas Vermeen. Uh, what plans do you have coming up for 2020 and beyond? What can we expect from you? Wow. Well, we've got quite a few things that we're going to do, um, but we have also <laughs> are in suspense like the rest of the world uh, to see if we can start doing meetings again and if we can start traveling abroad again. Our borders are closed right now. Um, but we would like to get out and start doing our live events. I, I love to meet people. I love to, 
be in rooms with people. And so, you know, a lot of our big events that we did have planned have now, you know, been either sort of postponed or what have you. So my hope is that we can get back to that as quick as we can. But in the meantime, we're doing lots of training online and we've got some really cool free resources that we give on places like YouTube, where you just type in my name and you'll see that we do training almost every day, in fact, and Instagram and elsewhere to help people build some of the things that we talked about. So my plan is to keep building in any way I can and uh, see what the universe allows for us next. That sounds great as well, too. And who do you consider biggest influence in your career? The biggest influence in my career? Oh, my goodness. Wow, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think there's quite a few uh, among the top achievers that were big influences, and many that still are. Um, but if I were to take the biggest and, and the person that really kind of caused me to shift things up a lot, one of them was uh, a mentor and a friend of mine by the name of Frank McGuire. And Frank actually is one of the four co-founders of Federal Express. Oh, wow. But he was also one of the former uh, VPs of marketing for KFC, American Airlines. He worked at ABC when it was radio and switched to TV. He gave Alan Alda his first job and Charles Osgood and Ted Koppel. He also worked in the White House under JFK and Lyndon B. Johnson. And he also personally tutored Marilyn Monroe in philosophy. And every time I'd meet with Frank, he became just like a grandpa to me until he passed away. And um, he always stretched my mind and stretched me and really drove me to think bigger and to understand that I was capable of amazing things. And the more that I would believe in myself, the more I could do it. And one of the big mottos that he shared all the time, and even wrote a book about it, was connecting the head to the heart. That mm. it's not just about being logically present, but it's being fully present. And when we're connected our head to our heart, we also begin to see the things that are of highest value to us. It's not just about how much money is in the bank account or the things that we accomplish, but are they really, truly satisfying to us? Are they giving us the validation uh, and the joy that we want? And are we bringing that to other people? So I'd say that that's probably the biggest influence for me. And that's fantastic as well, too. I recognize some of the names, including Charles Osgood, who I listen to um, on a regular basis. He's just fantastic. And uh, what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? The best advice I'd say is um, really believe in yourself right? Believe in yourself and listen to that small voice within you that tells you that you can do amazing things because that's the voice that's correct. That's the voice that is really the truth. And um, part of listening to that means listening to it enough that you're prepared to make some commitments, that you're going to make a decision, that you're going to do something. And decision never is truly a decision unless it has action attached. So listen to it, get going, do something, gain momentum, and don't worry about being motivated. Just worry about getting started. That's the key. And that's the most important thing as well, too. Something to keep in mind. Once again, Douglas Vermeen, the producer of How Thoughts Have Come Things on the Mike Wagner Show. Doug, a big thank you for your time. You've been fantastic. Look forward to him again soon. And Douglas, once again, tell us about your upcoming projects, what's your website, how do people contact you, and where can people uh, check out your books and also check out your films? Well, you can certainly head to douglasvermeeren.com. And that's where uh, you can find a lot of links about us. But I would suggest going over to YouTube, typing in my name or Instagram. And there's lots of free resources there. And then certainly for the movie, head over to HowThoughtsBecomeThings.com. Again, that website, HowThoughtsBecomeThings.com. And you can see the movie right now. And there's lots of other really exciting things that uh, you'll see when you arrive there. So come join us. We'll do that. Again, Douglas, a big thank you for your time. You've been fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor. Keep us up to date. We'll love you to have back on 2020 and beyond. You've been fantastic. Well, thank you. And I look forward to it. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show.